series. Uh, for those of you that don't know, my name is Jason, and in this series, we are going to be building a full mod from the frame up. Um, I'm going to go through and walk you guys through all the snags that you can hit, um, things that might not work together. Um, I actually haven't personally used a rig swing arm yet, so you guys are going to be kind of going through this with me. Um, the parts that we have here for this build at this point in time is a KLX 110 L frame. This is a 2012. Um, this is a Rig KLX 110 swinger. This is their bracket for their shock mount relocation. I'm going to show you guys how to put all this stuff on. Um, we've got Marzacci clamps. Uh, these are BBR fat bars. Those are pretty hard to find and their BBR top clamp for running, running inch and an eighth. Um, we also have some Gen 2 Zokes they're gonna go on, black stanchions. It's gonna be a nice looking bike. So let's start with the rear end itself. Um, the first area you gotta go to put on a MX style swinger. So this is not A style, this is MX style. So. Um, you need a shock relocation bracket to do this. Um, there's a few companies that make them. There's even a company I think called Shots Fabrication that makes one now. Uh, BBR also does make them as well. Um, a lot of times you want to use the shock bracket that was made for your particular swinger. So this is actually Reeks KLX 110 shock bracket. Um, you've got a bolt hole at the top um, on this particular bracket. Um, this is actually a three-piece bracket, and these pieces go on the side. Something to note about building a full mod with a shock relocation bracket is a lot of the old-school brackets do not fit a 2010 plus frame because the way the subframe was built to hold the battery, um, this comes up at a different angle than a pre-2010, and you can run into clearance issues, which I'm going to show you here. Um, so we're going to stick the front in here, get it lined up, put in the upper shock mount bolt. This would be the factory top shock mount bolt. Now the issue that I was having here that I wanted to show before I did anything about it is this is actually going to hit the weld here when you try and clamp it down it's not going to run flush so you have two options here which you can either grind this down or you could grind this weld down to the point where it will fit properly um, I will probably choose to grind the weld down because I can re-weld it uh, if it's an issue other people may choose to grind the bracket down because you can get around it and they don't have the ability to weld it. So um, for me though, I would rather not destroy a piece this old that's hard to find like that. Um, the next form of action here on the this particular rig bracket is to have these, these long bolts that pass through here and the side mounts here. passes through there. And then this piece mounts on this side. Now I'm not going to bore you guys with tightening these bolts, but obviously when you're building a bike, you should be tightening all these bolts. Um, I, you can see this gap here, how that's not allowing it to come flush. So basically I'm gonna have to modify that until it comes flush. And like I said, I'll do that by grinding off the frame. That'll be in the uh, part two of this video. I'll, I'll deal with all this stuff. But I wanted to show you from the get go of what you can run into when you're trying to make this stuff mount up and that can freak people out. Um, I already have the shock mounted in here because it's kind of something that would be a little bit difficult to video But I mean, it's very simple. It's just a pass-through bolt here and you just nut on the other side But we will take this Which is your swing arm pivot bolt So on your frame 
you've got this, that's what this is referred to as, is the swing arm pivot bolt. Hold your factory swing arm. So we're going to line all this up. So we'll start with the swinger or the axle pivot bolt or the swing arm pivot bolt. Everything's nice and clean, it goes together well. So we got the mount on and that last part, um, there's actually a motor mount bolt that passes through here um, at the moment that I do not have on hand. So we're gonna leave that for now. Um, to get this bike to stand up so you can build on it, just find something you can stick here, whatever, make it work. You got something high enough for here, you can do that too. Um, the next step, I'm actually gonna show you how I would prep a clamp. Um, to get this in here. Now I already have the bearing races in the frame. Uh, this frame had them in there already so I figured why change them because they're in good shape. I however did have to get a new KLX 110L bearing kit because this has the bigger race. Um, that's another thing to note is that the difference on the 2010 and up and 2010 and down is 2010 and up has a bigger lower race. So uh, 2010 and previous, or 2009 and previous won't actually fit this lower race. Um, now, when you before you put these bearings on, these also have these little seals and this washer actually does help with the spacing at the end on the top here. So do not forget that. Um, now, when you put on a bearing, you wanna pack it with grease way to do this isn't very enjoyable but it's got to be done and this is the way that you can get bearings to last is packing them as to just compared to just rolling grease on it a lot of people have never packed the bearings it's really not a big deal uh, you don't need any special tools you can use your hand um, this is maxima waterproof grease get it from your local motorcycle shop or whatever. So just take this, glob it on your hand there, take the bearing and just nip little bits. See how it's starting to come through the top there? That's how when you know the bearing is packed and you can move on to the next section, and you'll see the grease come through there. Very simple. Same way you do it on like a, you know, trailer bearing, boat bearing, anything. Anything that's got a, a roller style bearing, the front end of a vehicle. Um, some older cars still use these. and Some even heavier duty vehicles use this. But that'll assure you that it's fully packed and it's not gonna get gravelly really quick on you. Um, this is the only part that does stink is that it's, it's a dirty job. Now, this lower bearing presses onto the stem and you have to force it down so you need to have a tool to do that with. All right, decided to put some gloves on because uh, you're gonna keep having to deal with the bearings here and it just gets messy. But for this part, you really need like, you know, a pipe of some sort that can slide over this and you can use to press this bearing on. You can use a press if you want. Uh, I don't really think it needs that. So we're just going to give this a go. See how that fits right on there? Nice and perfect. See if we can tap around there. Pretty simple. Now, we're going to take this. 
slide it right up in there. Then you've got a top bearing. I already packed this one, so you guys don't have to watch me do that twice. Slide it right in top there. Then you're gonna have this seal. There's a seal for the top as well. Slides right down on there. So that'll push down with the actual, I'll show you this part right here. Lock nut. This is what actually adjusts the pressure on your bearings here. Depending on how, how tight you like your front end. Some guys like it a little bit more sloppy. Some guys like it, you know, really tight to where it won't move when it's on the stand. Gonna drive these all the way together the first time you put this together to make sure everything seats you know kind of turn it while you're tightening it you can see I'm doing it by hand at this time but just gonna grab a little punch fresh Oops. didn't like that pressure that feels pretty tight it's kind of hard to judge at this point this can always be adjusted later but um, that feels pretty good you want to have some tightness past hand tight um, those are gonna break in and you'll have to adjust as you go um, now we got the top clamp itself Slide that right on top there. And then we've got our top lock nut. This is a fancy one. A little anodized. Never hurt nobody. So I'll get this hand tight for now. So I don't have to bore you guys with that process. Um, it's a little tight in here. Uh, it's much better to take the actual top handlebar and the top clamp off so that you can. Um, so that you can tighten this with a socket instead of like, you know, a crescent wrench because it'll beat it up. It's a lot, beats it up a lot less when you use an actual socket. But now we're at the point where we got to slide in some fork tubes. Let me get all this stuff out of the way here. So I still have the axle in here. I'm going to pull that out for now and make it easier to put the, uh, the fork tubes in individually. We'll stick the close leg in first. So sometimes I actually use a ratchet strap and I'll strap her up to like uh, the beam down here or whatever. But to make it easier on yourself, but it's all right. Um, you wanna get, obviously, your logo facing forward. Now is not really the time to decide where you want the clamps to be on the tube. So just get them flush with the cap here and tighten it down for now. I'll try and get her straight. Clamp this side down. All right, we're gonna tighten all these down to make sure the uh, clamps don't slide around in the fork tubes or building the rest of the bike. stick the axle back in for safekeeping uh, this is a KLX 110 Zoke axle um, when you do like KX 65 like if these had 
if this had KX65 lugs on the bottom, this would be a completely different axle if it was genuine Zoke KX65 lower lugs. Uh, those directly, that axle would directly work with KX65 wheels. Um, this axle actually has to be, there's a way to make it work with a KX65 wheel and I'm gonna show you guys when we get to that point, which will be in the next video. We're gonna do brakes in part two and wheels and all that fun stuff. But for now, I'm gonna put this back in here for safekeeping, which isn't always easy. We'll leave that in there. Um, and that's gonna be a great place to end part one of building the full mod. Um, in part two, we're gonna at least do wheels, brakes, um, we might mount a motor in here or put the plastics on, um, but for now, this is how far we're going to get.